and hand it over to Joe. Good evening. My name is Joe Frawley. I'm the acting district, tra uh, yeah, district operations engineer for the MassDOT Highway Division District 3 office in Worcester. Thank you for joining us tonight to learn more about the Charlton Oxford Route 20 reconstruction project. The purpose of this evening's meeting is to update you on the status of the project and to discuss early construction activities. I will provide an outline of the meeting in a few minutes, but we will have a presentation that will last about 40 minutes long. Then we will provide you with an opportunity to ask questions or provide comments. While we will wait until the end of the presentation to answer questions, please feel free to use the Q&A button to ask a question or share a comment during the presentation. Now, I'd like to introduce our producers, Hung Pham and Courtney Sularud, who will go over the basics of how this live virtual public information meeting will be conducted. Hung? Thank you, Joe. And once again, thank you for those who are attending tonight. My name is Hong Pham, and I will be the one who, one of your Mass DOT producers this evening, providing technical support and facilitating questions. My co-producer, Courtney Shudarud, uh, as well. I know that we have been in a lot of Zoom meetings, however, I think it's still good to go over some of the basics. Uh, this is a webinar, and with that, I would like to let the attendees know that we cannot see you, but you can see us. At the bottom of your screen, there are a few options that are available to you. Please be sure to click on the audio setting to set up your audio and microphone so that you can hear uh, during the Q&A and, and participate. Additionally, there is the raise hand in the Q&A icons. Uh, please use the raise hand during the Q&A session and we will call on you and let you unmute your microphone. As you, are, as you are aware that when you joined in this presentation, your microphone is automatically muted. We also welcome anyone to use the Q&A uh, to provide comments and questions during the presentation and we will respond to you at the end. This presentation does have closed captions um, from our service provider. Uh, to enable that, please click on the show captions or view full transcript. Also, if you have difficulty hearing us uh, during the presentation, you can dial in by phone with the number 309-205-3325 using the webinar ID 8 one zero two five one four eight four four and if you're having technical support if you need technical support from zoom please uh, dial eight 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 seven nine 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 six 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 please note that this is a virtual public meeting, um, which is currently uh, being recorded. Uh, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation may choose to retain and distribute the video, still images, audio, and our transcript. All parts of this meeting is considered a public record. By continuing uh, to stay with us tonight, you are consenting to participate in the recorded event. Uh, otherwise, you may choose to excuse yourself from this meeting. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a Q&A session, and that is at the end of this presentation. We have also created a survey at the conclusion of the meeting. Please take, a time, to, please take the time to respond to those questions as it helps us improve our presentation of the material. We welcome your feedback. This slide talks about Mass DOT policy and diversity. Uh, Mass DOT's uh, diversity on, let me restart. This slide talked about Mass DOT's policy on diversity and civil rights. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit the URL you see on the screen, www.mass.gov slash non-discrimination hyphen in hyphen transportation hyphen program. You can also reach out to the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. 
I would like to also note that the meeting has been published in a number of local newspaper advertisements, mass DOT social media outlets such as Facebook and Twitter, the Central Massachusetts Planning Commissions, and other organizations that you see on the screen, such as the Charlton Oxford uh, Council on Aging and Senior Center and Venture Community Services. And once again, thank you for joining us tonight and we appreciate your participation. And back to you, Joe. Thank you, Hung. I also want to uh, quickly thank both uh, towns who advertised through their social media networks um, tonight's, tonight's meeting as well. Um, so this meeting's presentation We'll begin with an introduction of the project team. Then we will provide an overview of the project, cover the various elements of the design, discuss construction staging and upcoming construction activities. At the end of the presentation, we will outline the next steps and how we will keep you informed about the project moving forward. Once the presentation is complete, we will conclude this evening's meeting with a period for questions and discussion. The team for this project consists of staff from the MassDOT Highway Division and our design build construction team. Susan Harrington from MassDOT's major project section is the project's manager for this project. Again, my name is Joe Frawley and I am from the District 3 office which is responsible for overseeing the construction of the project. The resident engineer from our district construction section is also on tonight in case there are any questions. His name is Clodian Pol Polisi. In addition, Richard Kelly, the project manager from HDR, who was responsible for the preliminary design of this project for MassDOT, is also in attendance to answer questions as needed during the Q&A session. The design build team consists of a team with both a contractor who is responsible for constructing the project, along with a design engineer, which will finalize the design. Jack Harney, the project manager from DW White, will speak later about the construction staging and early construction activities. Lenny Velichansky, the design manager from Trans Systems will talk about the elements of the project design. Jonathan Nero from Beta Group is available for any questions during the Q&A period related to environmental permitting. Sarah Parisky from Regina Villa Associates will discuss how we will keep you informed about the project. How did we get here? Some of you may have joined us when the MassDOT team last met with the public in May of 2021 for the 25% design public hearing. Since this project has been advertised as a design build project, the steps since the public hearing are a little different than for our, most of our MassDOT projects. This project was advertised for design build last April, and teams that combined contractors and designers submitted proposals and bids. Once the project received a notice to proceed in November of 2022, the selected team of DW White and Trans Systems was able to prepare to begin early construction activities while also refining and finalizing the design. We are meeting tonight to update you on the design and to discuss those early construction activities. Next, I will review why this project was initiated. The project was initiated because the combination of high speeds and a narrow roadway results in a roadway that is unforgiving. There are a history of crashes particularly severe and fatal crashes along the corridor. Additionally, there is existing congestion along the section of Route 20, particularly in the vicinity of the intersection of Route 20 and 56. The bridges over the French River 
and Little River are both functionally obsolete. There are also limited facilities for pedestrians or cyclists within the project limits. What is the scope of the project? To set the scope of the project, the team needed to set several goals and objectives. The goals and objectives for this project are to improve safety, improve multimodal mobility, which means improving facilities for pedestrians and cyclists, as well as improving operations for motor vehicles. Additionally, the project will replace the functionally obsolete bridges over the Little River and the French River. I'm gonna spend a few minutes on this slide. So to help orient you to the graphic at the bottom, you're looking at the corridor uh, that, that, that is being reconstructed, which is Route 20 between the intersection of Richardson Corner Road and Oxbow Road in Charlton. Uh, that's at the far left side of the graphic where the traffic signal symbol is shown. We're reconstructing Route 20 from that intersection east to the intersection with Route 12 near the Auburn-Oxford line, which is at the far right side of the graphic. To improve safety, a median is being installed along the section of Route 20. To improve multimodal mobility, pedestrian and bicycle accommodations will be improved. The existing signalized intersections at Richardson Corner Road in Charlton Route 56 in Oxford and Route 12 in Oxford will be upgraded. With the addition of a median, the MassDOT team evaluated several locations along the corridor to provide an additional full access intersection that would facilitate movements for vehicles looking to reverse direction. Locations that were evaluated during that process, um, but ultimately dismissed, include the intersection of Glenmere and Bay Path Roads in Charlton, and the intersection of Pioneer Drive in Oxford. The decision that was made during the preliminary design was that the best location to provide an additional full access intersection was at the intersection of Route 20 and Oxbow Road in Oxford. And when we last met with you at the 25% design public hearing, we showed a new traffic signal at that location. Since that meeting, the MassDOT team has reviewed the projected traffic volumes at the Route 20 Oxbow Road intersection. And we determined that a traffic signal would most likely not be warranted. Because the traffic signal warrants must be met for a signal to be installed, MassDOT has been working closely with the design build team to evaluate other intersection configurations that will still provide for the left turns and U-turns at Oxbow Road that were previously presented. That evaluation is still ongoing and we expect to have more details to provide on the Oxbow Road intersection at our next public information meeting, which will be held this spring. Additional work in the project includes replacing the Route 20 bridges over the Little River and the French River, optimizing drainage, and introducing best management practices for stormwater treatment. Now, I will hand off to Lenny Velichansky from Trans Systems to speak more about the elements of the design and the final design development. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, everyone. I would like to take a few minutes to describe our approach to staying true to the goals and objectives Joe just mentioned. First and foremost, I wanna talk about safety. The improvements include introduction of physical separation between the eastbound and westbound Route 20 traffic. In a high-speed portion of the corridor west of Route 56, this will be accomplished by installation of a median barrier similar to the one currently located west of Richardson Corner Road. 
you can see that uh, on the upper image. East of Route 56, this separation will be achieved by a raised median island with guardrail. This treatment is consistent with the section of Route 20 in Auburn, just east of the project limits seen on the lower image. Our safety improvements include also improve, uh, improving roadway alignment and increasing the sight distance, widening the corridor to introduce shoulders, and providing emergency pull-off areas on both sides of Route 20 throughout the corridor. Another project goal is to improve traffic operation. This will be accomplished by optimizing traffic signal timing, adding turning lanes at the intersections, and providing bow buyouts to allow U-turns for vehicles looking to reverse direction on Route 20. These bow buyouts are designed to accommodate large trucks. Addition of shoulders in the median will result in a cross section that you can see on this slide. Each roadway barrel will include two travel lanes flanked by shoulders on both sides. In addition <clears throat> to fulfill the objective of improving multimodal mobility, uh, a shared use path will be added on the north side of Route 20 between Oxbow Road and the eastern project limit at Route 12. And a sidewalk will be extended on the south side of Route 20 from the eastern limit at Route 12 to the Route 56 intersection. This sidewalk will connect to the existing sidewalks on Route 56. The bicycle and pedestrian accommodations are illustrated on this image. The purple line on the north side of Route 20 is an eight foot shared use path and the cyan line on the south side is a five foot sidewalk. As Joe mentioned, the project will replace functionally obsolete bridges carrying Route 20 over the Little River and the French River. In order to maintain the required number of lanes, the Little River Bridge will be constructed using conventional stage construction which will take approximately one year. Replacement of the French River Bridge will take advantage of accelerated construction methods. And while the overall construction, including the widened portion of the bridge, will take a year, reconstruction of the bridge section carrying traffic today will be accomplished over two weekends. During those two weekends, traffic on the bridge will be reduced to one lane in each direction and restored to four lanes immediately follow each weekend. This method of construction greatly reduces impacts to the traveling public. The rendering shown on this slide illustrates the final condition along the eastern segment of the corridor. This image is oriented looking east towards the Route 12 intersection. You can see the wide striped shoulder on the left side of the eastbound movement. This shoulder is introduced in order to increase the side distance along the roadway curve. Lastly, I would like to briefly touch upon traffic control during construction. Jack will elaborate on this in a moment, but I want to highlight one element of this real-time traffic management system. We will install a number of video cameras throughout the corridor, which will provide feed to MassDOT personnel and will be invaluable in assessing sources of congestion and minimizing response time in case of an incident. Jack? Thank you, Lenny. Um, Jack Harney, the project manager for DWI Construction, will be building this project. Uh, the overall time frame for the project is approximately four years. We expect it to be completed in November of 2026. DWI will typically perform most work during the daytime hours. Typical work hours will be between 7 to 3 30, 7 a.m. to 3 30 p.m. Some work may vary depending on traffic volumes between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. There will occasionally be night and weekend work for some demolition and off-peak work that needs lane taking to execute them. We will always maintain access for emergency services. We will be in contact with all of the first responders to maintain communication throughout the performance of the contract. All major operations will be confined to fixed work zones. We will minimize construction vehicles turning movements within the project limits 
to reduce congestion. Travel speeds will be reduced through work zones for the safety of our workforce and the traveling public. DW White will be using water spray for dust suppression throughout the project. <clears throat> Temporary traffic control. <laughs> Excuse me. For local roadway users, DW White will have changeable message signs for advanced warning for detours and traffic impacts. We will install the appropriate construction signage throughout the corridor. DWI will use portable message signs and project website for announcements regarding detours. We will plan on seven day advanced warning for these detours. DWI will maintain access for abutters throughout construction. We will also maintain the traffic signal operations throughout the project duration. We will install cameras throughout the corridor to monitor current traffic flow and any impacts to that flow. This will enable us to make real-time adjustments as incidents occur around, over the corridor over the next four years. Regionally, the portable message signs will be installed at key decision points ahead of the project, enabling motorists to take the least impacted route uh, before they would reach the car. It's tricky to see from the slide. We realize it's a little small, but we have divided the project into six areas, working from west to east. The areas are labeled A at Richardson's Corner, B, C, D, E, and F at route, the Route 12 interchange. The project is approximately 3.2 miles long. As a typical section, we have broken out stage A to demonstrate how we approach the general approach of the project. In all of these slides, we will be looking east. In stage one, we will move all of the traffic to the westbound lanes. Two lanes westbound and one lane eastbound will be maintained. We will perform the widenings and utility relocations on the eastbound side of the road. Once completed, we will move to stage two. Stage two, we move the traffic to the widened eastbound side, and once again, maintain two lanes westbound and one lane eastbound. Once shifted, we will perform the widening and utility relocations on the westbound side of the road. Once stage two is completed, we will split the traffic and perform the improvements to the median. There will be a median barrier in certain portions and raised median island in the other, as Lenny had mentioned in a previous slide. Once the medium is median is complete, we will have the finished condition, uh, which will be a very nice time for all of us. Upcoming work activities. In February, DW White will perform test pits and borings to further the design of the project. We need further information regarding the soil conditions for retaining walls, bridges, and the like for the design of those uh, structures. This work will be performed during the day from 7 to 3.30, Monday through Friday. There will be intermittent short-term single lane closures of eastbound and westbound along Route 20. Also in February through April, we will be establishing erosion control along Route 20. In order to install these measures, we will also be clearing vegetation along the car. This will be done weather permitting during the day, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. This will involve, also involve intermittent short-term lane closures eastbound and westbound along Route 20. I'll now hand it over to Joe Frawley to discuss the next steps. Sure. Thank you, Jack. After tonight's meeting, the next steps of the project are as follows. In March, the early construction activities will begin. This spring, we will meet with the public again to provide more information as the design continues to be refined, including providing more details on the design of the Oxbow Road intersection. This summer, 
is when the final design is expected to be completed and the stage construction is anticipated to begin in July. We anticipate that construction will be substantially completed in September of 2026. And as Jack mentioned earlier, fully completed in November of 2026. Now I will hand off to Sarah Peritsky from Regina Villa Associates to discuss how we will keep you informed. Sarah, I believe you are still muted. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Peritsky, and my team at RVA is helping MassDOT with the public outreach for this project. Um, our team is assisting MassDOT by implementing a timely and informative outreach program. Ensuring that stakeholders are aware of the project and receive timely updates will help you plan your participation and choose ways to follow the project. We've held a number of public meetings and continue to hold briefings with lo local and state officials and neighborhood stakeholders as needed. We will hold additional meetings before the start of major construction and at other major project milestones. We are maintaining a robust email database, which includes key contacts from regional and local organizations, municipalities, and elected officials. Those contacts and anyone else who chooses to sign up for our emails will receive email updates on a regular basis before key project milestones and in advance of construction activities and traffic impacts. We will also continue to keep our project website updated with the latest construction and traffic information. Here you can see a link to that project website. So for the latest project information, we do encourage you to visit that website where you can sign up for email updates about the project. You can also write us with questions or comments at dot.feedbackdistrict3 at dot.state.ma.us. And finally, you can find MassDOT information on social media. Now I'd like to turn it back over to Hung to discuss the format of the question and answer session. Hung? Thank you. So once again, just going briefly over the Q&A format here, um, that raise hand icon on the bottom, uh, raise your hand and we will call on you and that will allow you to unmute uh, your microphone. Um, I have seen that there are a couple of people who are already submitting the Q&A. Please, if you have any questions or comments, please use the Q&A. Uh, if you choose not to verbally ask your questions or comments, uh, we ask that you state your name uh, before your questions and your affiliation so that we can keep a better record and get back to you. Uh, we have right now 77 people uh, in the lobby in attendance. Um, we ask that you keep uh, share only one questions or comments at a time and limiting it to two uh, minutes to allow others to participate. I also see that there are there is actually one person who, are, who is on um, the phone. So in order to raise your hand uh, via phone, please press star nine and the moderator, me, will call on your last four digit or right now I'm only seeing three. Uh, and then you can unmute yourself by hitting star six. So once again, star nine to raise hand and star six to unmute. Once again, we have already, we have set up a survey. Uh, so at the end of the presentation, when you close out Zoom, the survey will pop up. We ask that you take the time to actually fill it out. Uh, your feedback is very important to us. And with that, I will open it up to elected officials who would like to ask questions or provide comments. Does any elected officials want to ask a question or provide any comments? I would like to invite, uh, I see that there is a representative, uh, Joe McKinney, McKenna. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Would you like to ask a question or make a comment on the project?
Representative Joe. Yay. I see you now. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to MassDOT and all the project partners. This has been a very open and collaborative process for uh, what's going on five years now. I know certainly the time frame is a little bit drawn out and longer than anyone would like, but it, it makes for a good, well thought out and uh, a project that takes all stakeholders into account. And I know that there's been a lot of feedback from the public and DOT has been very responsive to that feedback when received and has been uh, an excellent as far as communicating with us local and state officials as well as the public. So just appreciate the, the consistent and the open line of communication. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't see any other elected officials who would like to voice their opinion or ask a question. So with that, I will hand it over to Courtney so she can start with the Q&A that's been building up. Thank you, Hung. Just a reminder, we will be taking the written Q&A, um, raised hands, who would like to speak and also call in questions. So first we have a written question from Jessica Biblu who writes, can you clarify if there will only be one place for a U-turn on that entire stretch of Oxbow Road? Yeah, Courtney, would you mind going back to slide 13? Of course. And, and Jessica, thank, thank you for your question. So um, I figured bringing up the slide kind of helps describe where U-turn locations will be will be located. Um, so U-turns will be allowed at the Richardson Corner, Oxbow Road intersection in Charlton at the left of the screen. Um, then again at Oxbow Road in Oxford, uh, kind of where the uh, blue box and arrow is. Uh, then again, at Route 56 in Oxford, where the existing traffic signal is, there will be um, U-turn bulbs provided to facilitate U-turns. And, and then again, at the Route 12 intersection down near the um, Auburn-Oxford line. So um, there will be um, there will be those locations to allow people to reverse direction, but between Route 56 and Richardson Corner Road. Yes, the one U-turn location will be at Oxbow Road. Thank you again. Thank you for your question. We have another written question from David Wolkowitz. David writes, so the plan is to maintain the current pathway or will any of the curves and roadway elevations be eased? Yeah, yes, and I, I think, um, Lenny, would, would you be able to take that question? Sure. Yes, uh, so for the most part, uh, the road will, con will continue to follow the existing alignment generally. Uh, there will be areas of widening and realigning to improve the site distance. Uh, if uh, actually, Courtney, if you could go to the slide that showed the uh, rendering, uh, I don't remember the name, the number of the slide, but uh, it was, at the end of my presentation, just go back a little bit. It is slide, uh, it's, uh, yes, that one, yeah. So this, this is an example of uh, how widening and slight realignment improves the sight distance. As I mentioned during the presentation, you could see this wide striped shoulder and the purpose is to push traffic further away to the outside of this curve to improve the sight distance. Uh, and measures like that are implemented throughout the corridor, again, within, you know, within general corridor alignment. Uh, as far as elevation, we are staying very close to existing roadway profile, to existing elevations. 
Thank you so much, Lenny. So we'll do one more written question and then we'll go to a couple raised hands. So we have a question from Bruce Gilmore who writes, if we received the notice for the Zoom, are we already on the email distribution list going forward? I can take that one. Um, hi, Bruce. So yes, um, assuming that you got the, the notice from our team, because um, I know that uh, as, as others had mentioned earlier, we did have a lot of community partners promote this event. Um, so the mass dot uh, notifications went out on January 25th. And a week ago, as a reminder, on February 1st, um, you would receive an email that says it's from MassDOT and it has a blue bar at the top um, that talks about the project. So assuming you are um, getting notices from our project, then yes, you're already on our email list. You do not need to re-sign up. Um, but the link on this page here is where you would go if you did not receive notices from us. That's how you can find out about future ways to participate and all the construction and traffic information as well. Great, and with that, I'll uh, go to raise hand, uh, Andrea Fitzgerald. I believe you can unmute yourself now. Hello? I'm trying to unmute, hold on, hold on. Oh, you unmuted. <laughs> you had it. <laughs> okay, so with that, I'll hold off on Mr. Fitzgerald uh, for a moment, and we'll go back to the Q&A. Okay, so we'll do a couple more on the Q&A. Um, Debbie McMillan writes, will there be a sidewalk on the westbound side of Route 20? Yeah, so um, Courtney, if you wouldn't mind going to slide 18. Um, Lenny, can you uh, speak to this to this question? Sure. Yes. So uh, on the westbound side, you could see the purple line. That is a shared use path, eight foot shared use path. So that is uh, intended for the use by both bicyclists and pedestrians. Uh, so in a way, it is a sidewalk, but it's a shared sidewalk. And then there is a sidewalk, which is exclusively for pedestrians on the south, on the eastbound side. And that's that cyan line that you see here. Thank you, Lenny. And, and just to clarify that, that's, uh, the shared use path uh, will go from the eastern end of the project at Route 12 towards the Oxbow Road intersection. And the sidewalk will connect Route 56 to Route 12. Okay. We'll do one more written question. Joseph Silza writes, what are the anticipated beginning dates for lane closures at the location? Will the closures begin east or west end of the project? Yes, this is Jack Harney. I can um, take that one, uh, Mr. Silza. Uh, we anticipate as soon as next week, uh, we have approximately a dozen borings to do on the road and they are throughout the three mile corridor. Uh, we'll probably start uh, on the westbound side, taking one lane, as we've said, between seven to 3.30, and then coming back up to the eastbound lane, uh, doing borings at future retaining wall sites and at bridge uh, locations. Um, and then post after the next two weeks, then we would start a, uh, clearing vegetation operation, which would go through April. And once again, that would, uh, we would start going down the westbound side of the road and then going three miles and then coming back up the eastbound side of the road, which would also involve one lane closure um, during the day. I hope that answered your question. <clears throat> Great, thank you. I'm gonna try again. 
Um, Mr. Fitzgerald, I'm gonna hit re request to unmute. And if you're having a technical issue on the, oh, we got it. Outstanding. Yay, welcome. Thank you, nice, thank you for having me. I just got a quick question. I live on the Bay Path side of uh, Route 20 and I access the lower part of Bay Path Road to Route 20. Is that section of that my road permanently gonna be closed? Or do I have to go up to Richardson's Corner? Um, so, so Bay Path Road will continue to be open to Route 20. Um, but it will be um, only allow right turns in from Route 20 eastbound into Bay Path Road and right turns from Bay Path Road onto Route 20 eastbound. Um, but it will continue to be open. Uh, it, it will you will not need to go down to Richardson's Corner Road um, to access Route 20. Okay, yeah, because earlier it was confusing saying that they were apparently going to block that side of the road off. That's why I, I was just curious. Yeah, thank, thank you for your question. Sorry if there was any confusion. No, there will just be a median in the middle of Route 20. So left turns in and out will be, will be is what will be prohibited. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We've had a lot of great questions so far. We have a written question from Peter Mancuso, who writes, Texas pond has an invasive species of water chestnut that has taken over the entire pond. Is there a plan in place to contain this invasive plant life from contaminating the fresh river during the bridge reconstruction? The risk is that the plant will travel outside of the pond and into the river flow and thereby may be in fact contaminate other watershed areas. This is not an attractive plant and it is literally taking over everything and also threatens the wildlife and habit in the water areas above and below. I can take that question, Courtney, thank you. Um, appreciate the interest in the subject matter, Peter. Um, for that particular plant, we're not looking, uh, this project does not deal with any in water invasive species. However, we do have an invasive species management plan in place for terrestrial or land-based invasive plants to prevent um, viable seed stock from getting into waterways and traveling downstream. So um, unfortunately, we aren't looking specifically at the water chestnut, but there are a number of invasive species along the corridor that we are gonna look to mitigate the spread of. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a question from Tom McLaughlin. Tom writes, is there a detailed plan at the intersection of Richards Corner and Route 20 intersection to reconfigure? Sure, um, thank you for your question. Lenny, do you, do you mind taking that one? No, I don't. Uh, yes, there will be a reconfiguration uh, of that intersection. The main, uh, purpose of reconfiguration is to allow U-turns. And uh, we talked, both Joe and I mentioned the bulb biots that will be introduced on both sides, on the westbound side and the eastbound side, side to accommodate the U-turns. Uh, and these U-turns are designed for large tractor trailer trucks. You can, you can kind of see this rendering. This is the intersection of Route 56, but similar treatment will be at Richardson Corner. You can see these wide bulb outs. So if you go in, for example, if you go in westbound and you need to reverse direction, you can see that there's a left turn lane there where you will make swing wide, make that U-turn in reverse the direction. And the same thing in the eastbound, east to west. Thank you, Lenny. We have a question from Joseph Selza. Who writes, during lane closures, will there be Jersey barriers down the middle of Route 20? And if so, where are the turnarounds? Yes, this is Jack Carney again. Uh, no, in the uh, next few months, the, the lane takings will be done with uh, traffic barrels and um, crash trucks. So there'll be no uh, Jersey barriers to take those lanes. They actually will be picked up each day. So uh, traffic will be returned to as it exists today at the end of each day right now.
Thank you. A question from Curtis Meskis, who writes, if a traffic light is not warranted based on the projected trips at Oxbow Road, Oxford, what are the other considerations? Thank you. Thank you, Curtis, for the, uh, for the question. So um, we are looking at, um, at, at a few different options, but I think that really what we're looking at to provide control and to allow the U-turns and left turns to take place um, is, is a modern roundabout. Um, it's something that um, we uh, would, would provide those U-turn locations. Again, we're working through a lot of those details right now um, with um, the design build team and with, with our staff at MassDOT Highway Division. Um, so we are really working on that right now um, and we'll certainly plan to have more information on that intersection um, and how, how that evaluation works out um, when we're back um, to the public at our next meeting um, sometime this spring. Thank you again. Thank you, Joe. So we have a couple more written questions. We have one from Anthony Gribbins who writes, will there be a temporary positive median in place while both lanes of traffic are diverted into the eastbound lanes during phase one? Yes, can you go to slide 21? There you go. No, uh, there, there'll be, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, painted lines and there will be uh, the um, grabber cones that are uh, shown in this slide will be the uh, division between eastbound and westbound lanes. Thank you. We have a question from James Hubert who writes, once complete, will the 100% drawings be posted on the website for the public to view? Hi, Courtney. I'll 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 take that uh, that question. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Hubert. Um, what what we will do um, when the hundred percent plans are finalized is we will provide copies of the plans to both towns, to to Charlton and Oxford, um, so they'll be available for people to uh, to review uh, if if necessary. Um, um, so that's a way that we will that we will provide um, provide the plans, um, and we will certainly provide some more information about the design, the detailed design, at our next next public information meeting um, in the spring. Thank you again. Thank you. And we have a question from Jim Roddy, who writes: Has a study been done on the expected volume of bicycles on the shared use path? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take that question to um, Courtney and, and I, I believe the answer to this question is that um, there hasn't been a study um, done. Um, it's very challenging um, to do a study um, to project future volumes by pedestrians and cyclists. Um, one thing that MassDOT has is a, is a healthy transportation policy um, where uh, we are trying to provide facilities where we can um, to provide people with options to walk and bike along corridors. And um, we use some criteria for that, um, including maps that uh, MassDOT puts together um, with our partners that looks at uh, the potential for um, everyday walking and biking trips um, based on, on things like density of housing, proximity of destinations, things like that. Um, and so um, we looked at those maps 
um, and worked um, internally to determine where to provide the accommodations along this corridor. Um, but to answer your question, um, no, we didn't do a specific study to understand how these facilities would be used. I, I will say um, in my role as the traffic engineer for District 3 that I know the existing crosswalks and facilities at the Route 2056 intersection um, get used every day um, because I know people have um, certainly reached reached out to our office every time that those malfunction um, and we work to get them working as, as soon as we can. Um, but I, I hope that answers your question and thank you for it. Thank you, Joe. So we have another group of questions coming in. Just a reminder to everybody that you are welcome to ask any questions tonight. And we will also put up our contact slide. Again, if you would like to ask questions in the future, or if you would like to scan the QR code with your phone camera and go to the, um, the project website for more information or to get included on the email list. While this is up, we do have one question from Donna McLaughlin who writes, will the lighting be improved in this section of road? Hi, hi. Uh, thank you for the for the question, Donna. Lenny, would you mind um, answering the question about the lighting along the corridor? Yeah, the plan is to, uh, for the most part, to re uh, pretty much replicate the existing lighting along the corridor. We're looking at potentially uh, adding lighting, depending on the final treatment of the Oxbow Road intersection in Route 20 we may introduce uh, some additional lighting in that area. Uh, other than that, uh, it's going to be pretty much similar to what's there today. Great, thank you. Um, we have a comment from Debbie um, McMillian. Uh, currently motorist traveling westbound make illegal U-turns at Bay Path Road to reverse direction. Are there any plans to place in place, are there any plans in place to address the safety issue during construction? Uh, as previously mentioned, Jack Arnie again, uh, the turns from Bay Path Road will be limited to um, right-hand turns coming out and right-hand turns coming in. There'll be signage for, in that uh, regard. Um, unfortunately, it's like the world today. Uh, there's not going to be anybody there to, uh, you know, we will have details there when we're working. And certainly if we see dangerous operations, the detail officers can address that. Uh, but unfortunately, they're there for the safety of our workers, uh, first and foremost. But um, at this point, that is the best answer I can give you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, Jim Rohde uh, asked, cycling uh, is getting very popular. Uh, by direction, by bike travel on the eight, eight foot path along with pedestrians could get tight at certain times, such as the weekends. Yeah, um, Lenny, would you mind taking the question about um, how we're designing the shared use path? Uh, well, it is, I agree, it is tight, but unfortunately, this is such a constrained corridor. We're constrained by right of way, by wetlands, um, and it's given all those constraints, it's very difficult to fit in anything wider than eight feet there. Um, so, uh, as it currently stands, yes, it's going to be an eight foot path. Thank you. Uh, 
I would like to uh, give a quick update. Uh, currently, there are 68 people in uh, the lobby or attendees uh, list at this point. We do not have any more Q&A and there's no raised hand. So please, if anybody have any questions or comments, it would be great to hear from you. And once again, we have a survey set up. Uh, so once this uh, presentation is over and Zoom is exited, uh, the survey will pop up. We very much appreciate it that if you can fill out that survey and provide some feedback. Here is the question and answer slide one more time. Um, if anybody is interested in yes, asking any more questions, you can use the raised hand button or the written Q&A button to type questions, or you can call in on your phone by dialing star nine. And then Jim wrote in, thank you. Uh, great information and keep up the great work. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. I'm going to put the contact slide up one more time. We have a question brought in by Ted, Ted Courtney. So looks like Route 20 will be one lane eastbound during for the duration of the project, or can you clarify? I can clarify that. Uh, Route 20 will be one lane eastbound between uh, Richardson Corner and uh, Route 56. At Route 56, all lanes will open up to keep all the turning lanes as they are there today. Uh, east of Route 56, uh, it's going to have two lanes, at least definitely during the peak periods, it will have two lanes in each peak direction. Eastbound in the morning, westbound in the afternoon. I don't see any more raised hand and the people are in attendance uh, in attendance now is about 48 people. So I think it is appropriate for us to wrap up. But before we do, I'd like to mention again, please visit our website uh, for more information on the project, sign up uh, for email alerts, and follow us on our social media outlets such as Facebook and Twitter. So with that, I'll hand it over to Joe. Yeah, thank, thank you, Hung. And, and thank you everyone for participating this evening. We hope that you found this meeting informative and we certainly look forward to providing you with more details at our next meeting in the spring. As a reminder, please feel free to contact us with any questions or comments you have after tonight using 
our email address dot3 at dot.state.ma.us located at the bottom of the slide uh, to provide us with any questions or comments you have. Thank you again and have a good night. Good night.